Welcome to Electron Line. Looking over the list of max min problems that I've done so far on the videos, I thought it was a pretty meager list. And I know that some of these can be quite difficult, even for myself. And I thought the probably a good idea if I add some more examples to the list. Also, I wanted to go over the general approach of how to solve max min problems in calculus. So the first thing you want to do is draw a picture, a visual picture of what's happening. Pictures are much easier for us to understand than words, so take the sentences and turn them into a picture. And then you need to determine what in the problem is either being maximized or minimized. So you have to make that determination. It could be the cost wants to be minimized, the profit maximized, the volume minimized or maximized, and things like that. Then you want to take the variable that you determined you're trying to maximize or minimize, such as the volume, and you place that on the left side of that equation. The volume equals, and it will be a function of some other variables, typically more than one. And then you need to determine the constraint. Usually there's some limitation on the problem. You only are allowed to use this much material. You, there's a certain amount of cost for the material. There's a certain ratio between the length to width and the height and things like that. Those are your constraints by which the problem needs to abide. And so you need to determine what that constraint is. Once you determine that constraint, you then use it to eliminate some of those unknown variables because you ultimately want to write the equation as a function of a single variable. For example, if the volume is a function of the length to width and the height, well, you want to eliminate two of those three variables, so you can write the volume as simply a function of one of those three variables. Once you have an equation set up where you have the, the equation as a function of a single variable, then you can take the derivative of that variable and set the derivative equal to zero. When you take the derivative, that is an indication of where and how the function changes, and then you want to find a place where the function stops changing. When you reach a maximum value or you reach a minimum value, that's where the derivative is equal to zero. And so what you do is you take the derivative, you set it equal to zero, and then you solve for that one unknown variable that's left in the equation. Once you have that variable, you can then use that to find the other variables as well. And then finally, you probably want to check your answer to make sure that the answer does seem to make sense. So that's the strategy that we want to use. And typically, you'll use just about every one of these steps every single time when you do a max or min problem, as we call them. Of course, max stands for maximization and min stands for minimization. So now let's do some more examples. And you can see how we employ this particular methodology just about every single time. 